What's up everyone, welcome back to the shop. Cutting board project today, which is always exciting, I wanna do this 3D pattern. And it really doesn't look too complicated. We've got one block that has three different species of wood, and then we'll just have one regular block. So let's look at that complicated piece first, since that's probably gonna be the hardest to make. Well, what I'm thinking is three different species of wood, walnut, sapili, and maple. So we'll mill those down so they're fairly thin, and then we need to cut bevels on the edges. So we'll cut a 45 degree on the sapili and on the maple, and then the walnut, we're gonna cut that into a triangle. And we combine those together, we get this cool looking shape. And then from there, we then add a piece of cherry and then another one of those cool blocks and a piece of cherry and just keep building it out to however long you want. Now, I don't really want a giant cutting board. Mine's probably gonna be 12 by 15 or something like that. So if you want a bigger cutting board, wider, longer, just add more pieces. It's the same process. Once we glue all those strips together, we then take it to the table saw, we cut them into strips, turn those pieces over on their edges, orient our boards together, and then magically it comes out to this really cool 3D pattern. So let's start by milling up some lumber. I milled up all the boards that I'm gonna to use to make those weird combo blocks. I'm gonna go over the table saw and cut these into strips. Now, whenever I do that, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of padding. So I'm gonna cut them to the rough size, just like how when I milled them, I left a little bit of extra room. And that's on purpose. That way, whenever I get all these glued together, then I still got a little bit of room I can use to clean it up and plane it and join it and get them to the exact dimensions I want. I got a ton of strips here. I've got walnut, sapili, and maple. So now I'm gonna cut those bevels I talked about. So remember, we're gonna cut 45 degree angle on the sapili and the maple, and then on the walnut, we're gonna do triangles. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my blade to 45 degrees, cut those, and then while it's at 45 degrees, I'll make sure I cut the walnut too. Just much easier to set the blade once than have to do it again later. I got all my parts here and I'm just gluing all of these up. I'm using Type Bond 3 because it's waterproof and well, it's a cutting board, so it needs to be waterproof. Now, because we're dealing with three different parts and they want to slide around a bit, I figure the best clamp is to use probably the most versatile woodworking clamp you can get, which is just some blue tape. All right, just like 938 more to go. Once the glue was dry, I took those boards, ran them through the joiner, through the planer. They're looking really good. And then I took some time to make some cherry stripes too. This is just plain cherry boards. There's nothing really fancy about them. I just made sure that I cut them to the same size as the fancy ones that we made, which is a little under an inch square. I don't know the exact measurement of it. I didn't really measure it. All I really cared about was, do all the squares match up? Are they all the same size? And they do, so we're good to go. So now I can take all of this and glue it up. Definitely do not skimp on the glue with something like this. You don't have to go hog wild and, and have glue dripping all over the place, but you don't want to have any bare spots either. Make sure you get good even coverage. I gotta make sure all my boards are aligned correctly because you don't wanna have a board accidentally facing the wrong direction because there's no way to recover from that, especially if it's right in the middle of our cutting board. For good measure, I'm gonna throw a couple calls on here just to try to make things as flat as possible for me. So much about cutting boards is hurrying up and waiting. It's a lot of glue ups. The glue's dry, everything looks pretty good. Now it's time to clean this up. 
It's a bit too wide to fit through my planer, so I'm gonna opt for the drum sander. Our board's nice and flat, so now it's time to cut it into strips so we can make our pattern. To do that, I'm gonna use my table saw sled. It just makes it much easier. I can pull the sled way out. I got plenty of room to cut all of those pieces. Now, as far as the width of those slices, that's gonna be the thickness of your cutting board plus a little bit extra. So if you want a cutting board that's an inch thick, all said and done, you're gonna to wanna to cut your slices a little bit more than that because that way, whenever you put all your pieces together, you still have a little bit of room to plane or sand or route whatever you wanna to do to flatten all the surface. So I set a stop block up, I got my cutting board, time to slice this thing up. We cut our slices, now we just turn them over on their edge and alternate the pattern. So we've got a fancy block, cherry, fancy, cherry, fancy, and so on. And then whenever you kind of adjust your eyes, you see it has this cool wavy pattern. Last glue up, this is the exciting part. We know what the pattern looks like, but we're in the home stretch of making this cutting board. Again, I'm using Type Bond 3 because it's waterproof and it's a cutting board, so we need it to be waterproof. It's important to take your time with this because you really wanna have all of these little squares lined up. If for some reason they venture off course, it will be noticeable. So I'm doing one row at a time, trying to get everything lined up perfectly. While I'm gluing this up, let me give a big shout out to our superhero community over on Patreon. If you want to be a superhero yourself, just like Barry Woodham, Kevin Blakely, and Randy Grew, then head on over there, you'll get all kinds of extra goodies, sneak peeks behind the scenes, extra videos, and your support really helps out the channel here and helps me to make better videos on YouTube. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now we just wait. I let the glue dry on the board, so now it's time to flatten it. Now there's a couple ways you could do this. If you're lucky enough to have a CNC, you could throw it in there and do the whole thing, or you could do a router with a router sled and flatten it or you can sand the crap out of it. And that's what I'm gonna do. Now, luckily I have a drum sander, so I'm gonna do the bulk of it with that before I switch over to the orbital sander. If you don't have a drum sander, I recommend grab your sander, grab your headphones, and just zone out for a while. All right, we finally get to see the fruits of our labor. It's time to apply finish. Ooh. Oh. Now that's a good feeling. To be able to see that green come to life like that makes it all worthwhile. That was a ton of fun. I've never done a 3D cutting board before. And it was a little bit of work, but I'm hooked. I have to make more of these in the future. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button. And until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.